I've still got loads of um, dependencies for FOP, so let's go to FOP and see about installing that. Right, that, right yes, Apache Ant we can install now because we've got Java and yeah, I think if I do FOP, I think that may affect some other packages, including possibly the components that are relying on graphs. Yeah, so let's install this. Let's download it. So Ant is just a Java based um, building tool, a bit like Make, but uh, using Java libraries. Right, so it's downloaded. Let's extract it. Right, So the first thing this do is a said to fix an issue. And then we've got this bootstrap command. So that's finished. Now download the runtime dependencies using the fetch XML and script. Okay, and we can actually build it with this command. And now let's install it. So again, you'll notice these install commands. It's a version directory with a link pointing to an unversioned directory. So it makes updating the package a little bit easier. In fact, it doesn't look like that has happened. I not run that as no I didn't did I let's run that again that's a good job to check that it would have that running that with su minus c would have only run the copy but not the chain or the link so that's why the uh, ln hasn't worked so if we do listing of the opt directory now you can see the link has actually been provided Um, technically, we could get rid of this binary Java JDK that we've got here, but um, it's probably a good idea to have in case 
well, we're not going to run any Java programs. I don't know if there's any packages we install that will run Java. Possibility. But if there's an issue, we can always switch over to the OpenJDK binary to see if it's um, something to do with the source that we, we built. So it's worth keeping there for a moment. Um, certainly, disk space may be an issue as we get further into this build. Um, and if, if that's the case, I will um, delete that directory. I'm not sure how much space. Now it's only 300 meg, so it's not a great deal. Okay, so that's installed. There's some configuration here to add it to the profile for startup, and that should be it. So I'm going to source profile. That's done. Now I notice every time I source a profile, the prompt changes. There's obviously some something that needs to be altered with the um, configuration. It could be. I do know that there is two locations where. Yeah, it's, it's this bit here, I think. So obviously when it logs in, it used, maybe it's I set a custom one for the um, kind of text user. There's nothing there. Okay. Trying to rush here a bit, Let's slow down. Yeah, that's why this bash RC is overridden by the bash profile. So I need to copy this bit into let's do it again. that bit into the ETC profile. I should be doing. Yeah, that's better, that's return the prompt to normal. So that's interesting, there's two locations where the prompts are set. I thought I'd seen that for many years and never really looked into it. Um, it's pro probably because I've customised the prompt. Um, that's why I was seeing it happening, so I shouldn't see it happen anymore now. I presume when we log in, profiles run first, and then the bash RC is run, and that's why we get the changes in the bash RC. So, um, anyway, uh, I think if I run ant off the top of my head, we should, yeah, that shows that ant, the ant executable, has been found in a path. So, that shows that ant is complete. So I'm going to mark that one off. That's in, I'm sure there's a separate Java section somewhere. Yeah, 
Yes, there is. So we've basically installed everything in the Java section, completing that one. There's only four things there anyway, but you can see that that's complete. So now we can go to FOP. Now this is holding up a few rebuilds, so it's good that we can get this installed now and clear up some of the outstanding rebuilds. Now I'm not sure. Let me tidy this up. If we've already uh, downloaded this, yeah, that's there. Um, PDF box, yep. Font box is there, and this IFFO, yeah, they're all downloaded. Um, and need to go back to the BLFS homepage because I seem to remember there was something to do with the errata mentioning this package. Can you not see Monkey Plasma? I see. Right, let's go. Please use the 2019 version of these packages instead. Alright, so it looks like we may have already sorted that out. Oh, there's something there about text live actually. Oh, looks like we might need to rebuild text live. There's a file missing there, apparently. So I'll make a note of that. Um, I'll do that straight after FOP, I think. So if I Get this link open. Looks like that's probably something we have to download there, so I'll double check that. But let's get FOP done. Ensure Java Home is set directly. So this is a package that needs Java Home. We should have it now because we've rebooted and sourced and so on. So it is set correctly. So let's extract it. and copy these files into the correct locations. See if there's any configured, I don't look like there's any options. So installing the components, java.commandership zone JDK 10 has become more strict than previous versions regarding conformance of the java.comments and source code to HTML. FOP documentation is not really those standards, so the conformance checks have been have to be disabled. So that's what this command does. The stack size set in build XML for building the hyphenation patterns is not large enough, so this increases the stack size. Well, with OpenJDK, the minimum source version is 1.7, while the FOP or well, FOP build system is 1.6, so change that. Build XML calls for old version of PDF box components that are no longer available. Copy the updated PDF box components into the source tree. So this is a bit where this command will fail because we've had to download version 19. So all we need to do is to change this to a 9 and that has now worked. Compile FOP running the following commands. So this is ant running these commands that are appearing here, which is why we have to install ant. So 
So obviously FOP is Java based, so Java is going to be used to do stuff. And like I said, if we find it fails and we identify Java as the problem, then we can try and swap over to the binary version to see if that makes any difference. Right, so build was successful. And now we can install the package. I think this might cause a problem because there's no Java stuff here. Um, let's do sudo. Let's do this one at a time. Oh, in fact, no, they're just copying files around, so it doesn't matter. And it looks like FOP's been put into a versioned directory op as, opt as well. Yeah, it has. Configuring FOP. So it's saying about the possibility of running out of memory. Um, So to create this file, but insert the amount of memory that's installed. So this machine's got eight gigabytes. Um, it's probably not a good idea to put the maximum in. Um, yeah, I see seven six eight. Probably doesn't need eight gigabytes. Um, I'm going to put in 2048 2 gigabytes, that's probably way above what it needs. Obviously if we do get those errors, then we can increase that. And yeah, that number's got to be in megabytes, so 2048 is 2 gigabytes, equivalent to 2 gigabytes. And what they've got there, 768, that's 3 quarters of a gigabyte. And lastly, we need to add FOP into the profile. So we need to resource profile command, and we should have FOP in our path now. And there it is there. Running FOP can be somewhat verbose, default logo level. Can be changed from info to any of fine is fine and fine config info warning severe all or off. And you can do that by modifying a properties file. So that is FOP complete. So let's locate that and mark it off. It's under postscript at the end. And close that one down and tidy up.